chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. This is still the second prophecy which runs from chapter 3 verse 6 until chapter 6 verse 30. And in chapter 4, it is still the same. The, 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 the whole emphasis is still on repentance, appealing to the people of God to return to Him. So verse 1 to 4, an appeal to return to God. Verse 5 to 9, again, reminding them that the invasion is coming from the north. 10 to 18, Jeremiah's response. And then again, the weeping prophet will lament for the nation from 19 to 31. So, chapter 4, verse 1. Now, by now, Jer or Josiah has found, rediscovered the word of God, you know, the, 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 the law, and he was cleaning up the temple and do But all this were just external uh, reformation. But internal transformation uh, don't have. The people were still uh, indulging in their own evil ways. So, with that as the background, an appeal to return to God. Verse 1. If you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. And if you put if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. You shall not be exiled. So God is not saying you definitely must go into Babylon. But if you come back to me and you put away all this abomination out of his sight, means destroy. Because God can see you. Right? You hide under your blanket and so can see, right? Yes. He destroy. So out of my sight. So and you shall swear. You shall swear the Lord lives. Now, so just now put away all these things those are external changes but you must also have some internal open your mouth and what must you do and you shall swear the Lord lives in truth in judgment and in righteousness the nations shall bless themselves in him and in him they shall Glorify. These are the internal changes. And they must come together, not just external, but internal as well. To declare that God is true, God is uh, to, to, as He lives in, in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And in Him they shall glory. You cannot serve God and demons. You cannot serve God and devils and idols so that is what was required of them for us what about for us we must be born again we must be born again you cannot continue in your own ways and then still come to church go do all the good works and then I, 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 I should be saved now. I should be saved. I should have a place in heaven. If I'm gone, just uh, do me a Christian church funeral. No, you must be born again. You know the verse? You must be born again. John 1. So easy to remember. You know Cantonese? Sure, live one. Sang Sang. Okay. Uh, John 3.3. 3. <laughs> Because in John chapter 3, Nicodemus, uh, good guy, he was a teacher, a rabbi, you know. But Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There must be a spiritual birth. So don't, don't, don't just do external changes, you must have internal. 
So back to Jeremiah chapter 4. Verse 3, For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, these are farmers. So, so God will speak to them. Like Jesus, you know, he's, you know why he spoke with, in parables? These are natural stories, but with heavenly principles, spiritual truth. So they understand. So you are farmers. These people are farmers. Okay, fine. Let's talk about farming. So, for thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fellow ground, and do not sow among thorns. Break up your fellow ground, your hardened ground. Break it up. Ground that is not tilled. Break it up. Because you ask any farmer, how can they just go and start planting? They've got to loosen the soil, right? Break it up. Your heart is so hard towards God. Break it up. The ground, the ground must first be prepared, the, the farmer knows. And do not sow amongst corn. Don't sow on wrong soil. Ask any farmer. Hey, you go for the, I don't know, I think the dark, the darker, the brown, and so on. But you go to all the sand, how you sow. Right? So don't sow on the wrong spiritual soil. That's what God is saying. Do not sow among horns. You know that parable even in the gospel. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Eh, but God, Yahweh, we have already been circumcised. You know, when we were eight days old, circumcised already. But that is external. God is saying, internal. Your heart. God wants your heart. The heart is the center of your emotions, of your desires, and so on. That one must be circumcised unto the Lord. So circumcise yourselves to the Lord, cutting away of the flesh in the most secret place. Okay? And take away the four skins of your heart. It's not about your foreskin of your reproductive organ, but the foreskin of your heart. God wants your heart circumcised. So it is a heart issue. Heart issue is inside, right? It is not a veg. You know, veg is outside. Put on that. I prefect. Class monitor. I do. You gentile. You not clean. So where, where will that land you? In heaven? No. God takes it as a heart issue. So circumcise your heart. We take away the foreskins of your heart. You men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Lest my fury come forth like fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doing. Because when God comes, He is the all-consuming fire. He will burn. He will burn away everything that is not right, not righteous. So, the first four verses, and appeal for them to return to God. Next, invasion is imminent. Now, sometimes uh, they, people hear, yeah, invasion coming over. Here again, invasion. After a while, they get dull of hearing. But God is not giving up. Still pressing. So you and I, when we evangelize, we don't give up so easily. We must keep knocking. Keep going forth. So verse 5. Declare in Judah and proclaim it in Jerusalem. And say, you, you, you Jeremiah said, God, but you know, I told him how many times it is. He still me to repeat. Yes. Declare in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, Blow the trumpet in the land. Cry. Gather together and say, Assemble yourselves and let us go into the fortified cities. Now, you study the first five books of the Bible, the Deuteronomy, and then into 
Joshua and all this, uh, when they blow trumpet, uh, it is what? Battle cry. Get ready for battle. So right now, right now is from the north, uh, enemies are coming. Babylon is coming. And then here you have Jerusalem. But around Jerusalem, in, in Judah, you know, Judah is this, right? Then you got Jerusalem. Then around Jerusalem, within Judah, there are other cities. So better warn the other cities because north is coming. So blow the trumpet in the land of Judah. Cry. Gather together and assemble yourself. I mean, all the countryside, all the other cities come together and let us go into the fortified cities. It's not all, but some of the cities got fortified walls, you know, walls to prevent enemies from coming. So telling those who are staying outside the city to go inside the city, then you get some protection. Set up the standard towards Zion. Set up, what is the standard? Banner. Jehovah Nisi, the banner. Take refuge, do not delay. But it would be very, you, you are living in delusion uh, if you think, then by just putting a stick and a cloth, uh, you get your protection. It's just like you saw Dracula show. Oh, <laughs> take a two stick uh, like that. Uh. <laughs> if you return to the Lord and you obey Him, He will deliver you. Simple. But it's not just putting the banner. But anyway, blow the trumpet, set up the banner, set up the, the standard towards Zion. Take refuge where? In Jerusalem. Do not delay, for I will bring disaster from the north. Who will bring? God will bring. God will God use Babylon as his instrument to punish ba uh, Judah. I will bring disaster from the north and great destruction. Verse 7. The lion has come up from his thicket and the destroyer of nations is on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make your land desolate. Your cities will be laid waste without inhabitants. Who is the lion? Who is the lion? No la. <laughs> Not Jesus. <laughs> Make a guess and you cannot be wrong. Sita. Babylon. <laughs> all this context and all this warning is about the enemy from the north. Mm. If you go and see the, the symbol of uh, Babylon's flag, uh, you will find a lion. Mm. So, the lion has come out from his ticket from his hiding place and the destroyer of nations. At that point in time, the superpower was Babylon. He has gone forth from his place to make your place, your land desolate. He's going to destroy your land, which he did. Even the temple torn asunder. Your cities will be laid waste without inhabitants. All will be either killed or taken back to the north. Wow. This warning is frightening. But it happened already to the north. The north had already been taken away. And now God is saying the same can happen to you. Return to me. But they did not. Verse 8. For this, clothe yourself with sackcloth, lament and wail. This is a picture of what? Mourning, right? Funeral. Your death is coming soon. So you better clothe yourself with sackcloth, lament and wail. For the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned back from us. Jer for Jeremiah to, to deliver this message, uh, you think easy. No. I think next weekend, uh, next weekend, our PM is going to give his National Day message, right? Every National Day. Mm. Of course, it's good news. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes some hard facts, but good news and goodies, you know. Mm. Maybe got this relief, <laughs> subsidy, and so on. 
Mm. But imagine on that occasion, live telecast, you not see he, he, he like painting. Right? Yeah. But this year, let's say he stand up there, then he gives you all the bad news. Economy going to tank, la, you know, enemies from the north coming, la, you know, people will be savage. Well, you all watch live telecast, you all hey, better change to <laughs> CNN or see what watch other news, right? It's bad news. It's really bad news. And the people still, they have not turned back. And, and, and for him to deliver this and to say that the people has not turned back, no, his anger has not turned back from us. It's bad news, not easy. And for PM to deliver bad news, it's not going to be easy. But that's why they call Jeremiah, not the weeping prophet. To be accurate, they call him the courageous prophet. To be bold enough to deliver bad news. But he did. He was obedient. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that the heart of the king shall perish and the heart of the princess, the heart, the priests shall be astonished and the prophets will shall wonder. God will hold the leaders of Israel accountable. So you have the king, the king in Jerusalem, the king of Judah, he's in Jerusalem. His heart will perish. Then the princes, who are the princes? Those who are, you know, the cities outside Jerusalem, there are other cities, they are leaders of the other cities. Princes. And the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished. You mean what? Oh, the priests are so shocked. Oh, I didn't know this is coming. I didn't know God is so angry with us. I didn't know the enemies are coming. Can't be, right? Can't be. If they are holy people serving God in the inner court, in the outer court, surely they know. But Singapore... They say, actor. <laughs> Astonish. And the prophets shall wonder. These are the false prophets. These are the false prophets. They've been telling lies. So, the third part is Jeremiah's response. Verse 10 to 18. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, surely you have greatly deceived these people in Jerusalem, saying, You shall have peace, where else the sword reaches to the heart. Eh? Job. What did Jeremiah say? Jeremiah, no, then I said, Ah, Lord God, surely you have greatly deceived these people in Jerusalem. Jeremiah said to God that you have deceived your people. You said for peace, where else? There's no peace because the sword is in use. The sword reaches to the heart. It's not peace, it's war. Jeremiah was just quoting what the false prophets were saying. That's why he said, Ah, Lord God. Then he started with Ah. Mm -hmm. he, Jeremiah is saying this is what the false prophets were going around saying God you have deceived your people yeah. you shall have peace God is not right <laughs> not accurate you all will have peace but in actual fact it was war verse 11 at that time it will be said to these people and to Jerusalem a dry wind of the desolate heights blows in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people not to fan or to cleanse now we, we love wind right especially when we are out in the mission field are hot and humid uh, well, we like to stand in the way of the breeze so you get some cooling. Yeah. You think 
that is what they're going to get. No, they're going to get a dry wind. A dry wind in the, in the desert, in all these hot places, is a wind of destruction. Okay? They bring what? They bring sand. Desert sand. And they bring dust. This is the dry wind. And it is a picture of destruction. So the wind, the dry wind that is coming from the desolate heights in the wilderness towards the daughter of my people. The daughter of my people is referring to who? Jerusalem. The people of Jerusalem. Not to fair. Not to cleanse. Not to cleanse. A wind too strong for this will come for me. A wind too strong for this will come for me. We come for God. No, they come for the, to serve God's purpose. You understand? They will come to serve God's purpose. Will come for Him, not against Him. Will come for God to blow upon these rebellious people. Now, God said, I will also speak judgment against them, against the Jews, against the people of Judah. So does this sound like a happy God or angry God? Angry. Behold, he shall come up like clouds, and his chariots like a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are plundered. Referring to Babylon. He, the enemy, shall come up like clouds. Clouds. Uh, boom. Suddenly, who? Oh, sometimes suddenly, dark. Overcast, right? They will come suddenly. And clouds come before the storm. Oh, if you get this kind of prophecy, a terrible cloud. After the cloud is the storm, and you still don't repent. You must be really dumb. And so they were. God said, and his chariots, like a whirlwind. The enemies, they are very uh, numerous in chariots. But God told the, the Jews, don't trust in horses, don't trust in chariots. Trust in him. But the enemies, they use horses, they use chariots. And their horses are swifter than eagles. What? Wow. Cannot be right. Eagle five quite fast, right? But to say the horses are swifter than eagles. In other words, Ju Judah, you got no chance. The enemies will overwhelm you. Woe to us. Woe is opposite of blessing. Woe to us, for we are plundered. We are ruined. I mean, can you hear the heart of Jeremiah to, 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 to say this bad news to his people? Wow. Cannot. Not easy. But he said it anyway. And because he said all this bad news, his people didn't like it. People of Jerusalem didn't like it. Still he continued, verse 14. O Jerusalem, wash your heart from wickedness, that you may be saved. How long shall your evil thoughts lodge within you? If you were listening to Jeremiah, how do I wash my heart? How, how? Take out you know, sabun and then put back. No. Turn away from the evil ways. Turn back to God. What about us? How are we washed? How are we washed? Reading Bible, someone? By the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. Okay, okay. I give you two. Word of the Lord is second. The first one, first one. You are washed by the blood. Amen. Don't take Holy Communion. Uh. Uh, without the shedding of His blood, there is no remission of sin. His blood washes away my sin. Nothing I can do can take away my sin. But 
His blood cleanses my sin. Number one, number one. How are you cleansed? How is your heart cleansed? By the blood. Number two, by the water of the word. Where is this found? By the washing of the water of the word. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. 真的没有骗你，真的是。Ephesians <laughs> five, verse twenty-six. That he might sanctify and cleanse her, Jesus, for the bride, with the washing of water. By the word. The washing of water by the word. So, yes, when you accept Christ, the blood of Jesus cleanses away your sin. But, after the immediate sanctification, we also need continual sanctification. Because you know what? We're living in a sinful world. And we are still in the flesh. So we still sin. But how to keep yourself cleansed? Not your daily bath, but your daily washing of water by the word. So it is so essential that as a follower of Jesus Christ, purchased by his blood, cleansed and, and forgiven, you should continue to remain cleansed. How? By the word washing of you. Okay, so important to stay in the word. So back to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 14. So to the Jews, wash your heart, your heart from wickedness, that you may be saved. Turn away. Because those days they wouldn't know Jesus Christ. But turn away from your evil ways, turn back to God. How long shall you shall your evil thoughts lodge with within you? Verse 15 For a voice declares from ten and proclaims if affliction from Mount Ephraim. Now let me find the map. Okay. Now, this is Israel. Then, then, then is the furthest <coughs> north part of Israel. No. Okay. It's not inside, but just uh, up north. The furthest, the tribe of Dan chose to be there. Originally not there, but they chose to be there. So they are up and north. So there is a there are watchmen. Like we went to to uh to the north in Israel, then to the border you see got guards there. Yeah. In the days of old there were watchmen up and then. So the watchman spoke, alarm, gave warning, for a voice declares from them, okay, of what? Cloud coming. Enemies coming. You understand? No? They are the watchmen of the north because enemy is coming from the north. The, the, the person, the enemies coming. And proclaims affliction from Ephraim. Ephraim, it's in the center. This part is Ephraim. Okay? Center and what are they mourning? Affliction, enemies, threat coming, wickedness coming. Verse 16 Make mention to the nations, yes, proclaim against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country right for no their watchers come from a far country and raise their voice against the cities of Judah all these people they are coming not silently but roaring against the cities of Judah like keepers of a field they are against her all around Surrounded because they just come south, they just come south, 
and they will surround this place because she has been rebellious against me says the Lord your ways and your doings have procured these things for you this is your wickedness because it is bitter because it reaches to your heart what about us for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God all your Bible say all right everyone your ways and your doings you're speaking to all of Judah your ways and your doings have procured this for you you all have sinned and it is bitter and it reaches to your heart verse 19 now after Jeremiah's response we now look at a lament for the nation and again Jeremiah was crying out on behalf of the nation for the nation oh my soul my soul I am pain in my very heart my heart makes a noise in me I cannot hold my peace because you have heard oh my soul the sound of the trumpet the alarm of war so our friend Jeremiah was responding emotionally and not like someone who has got no attachment to Jerusalem he is one of them and as we, we study the, the, the chapters 4 he will put we we, we, he identified himself with them. We have seen he is part of them. Mm. And he said, My heart makes a noise in me. And he said, You know, the sound of the trumpet, that is the alarm for war. Why are you guys still so deaf, so rebellious, so stubborn? Destruction upon destruction is cry. For the whole land is plundered. Suddenly my tents are plundered and my curtains in a moment. You know what are the tents and the curtain? That is my HTV home. That is my dwelling. That is my shelter. You understand? If your dwelling is plundered and in a moment suddenly, boom. Like tsunami when they came and you go and watch the YouTube video the tsunami came on. those people on the bridge are having their tequila and, <laughs> and, and, and uh, sudden, boom light gone in a moment how long will I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet how long will I see the banner and hear the sound of the trumpet because when the enemies come First of all, when the enemies come, the first thing they take down is what? Your banner. Yes. And they put their banner, right? Mm -hmm. So the way you guys are going, uh, I don't think this banner will stay very long. You know, you know what she said? Say? When they come, uh, this banner, the enemies will take down. So your hope is not in the banner. You think what? Put the thing there, ha, enemies get. Mm -hmm. You know? And when the enemies come, they don't need to blow trumpet anymore. Because they have victory over you war is over verse 22 for my people are foolish they have not known me they are silly children and they have no understanding the fool is he who believes that there is no God but not that they don't believe there is no God. They, they know Yahweh is there. They just choose to ignore Him. That's all. Fools also. And this is very strong language for from a father 
to his people. But God, we, we are your chosen nation. Why you talk to us this way? Because you are silly. You are foolish. You got no understanding. So to find understanding, it is in the word of God. Okay? But God said, they are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. You remember what Paul said in Romans 7 verse 19. The good that I will to do, I do not. That which I will not to do, I do. Wow. When Paul, uh, the hero, the champion, uh, speak like that, I got no chance. Uh, so I better keep quiet. He is a super saint, if I can put it that way. Yeah? The, one of the greatest contributors to the Bible and, and so on. If he himself can say uh, that there are times when I want to do, I don't do. Things I shouldn't be doing, I do. So that's why we must continue to walk close with the Lord, be washed by the word. But these people are foolish. Wise to do evil, easy. To do good, they have no knowledge. Like you don't need to teach your children nor grandchildren how to be naughty, right? How to lie, no need. You only got to teach them how to be truthful, to do good. Verse 23, I beheld the earth and indeed it was without form and void. Now, this part is important for, for God to say this to them. I beheld the earth and indeed it was without form and void. And the heavens, they had no light. When was the last time you read this? At the creation, right? At the creation. God is saying, when this thing happened to you, it is as if Israel is back to the original at creation. Before creation, no form, yeah, void, no light. Oh, please, oh, don't, don't go back to the beginning. You know, very empty. But God is saying, when this happened to you, it will be like it was way before creation. You want that? Please, don't make Singapore like the Masik Fishing Village long, long time ago. We, we, we cannot, you know, we cannot tolerate that. You understand? Uh? That is what God is saying. I be held. I beheld the mountains and indeed they trembled. And the hills and all the hills moved back and forth. I beheld and indeed there was no man. No more inhabitants. And what? And all the birds of the heavens had fled. I beheld indeed the fruitful land was a wilderness. And all the cities were broken down at the presence of the Lord by His anger. Verse 26 tells us the reversal. Now, today you go to Israel, you see, it is a fruitful land. The neighboring countries uh, may not be, but Israel, or fruits are uh, orange, or pomegranate, or olive, everything, water, and so on. God has turned this desert into a fruitful land. But if you disobey, he said this land is a land, I mean, but we're not talking about today, we're talking about those days when he, he promised, uh, uh, he, he said this to, to Moses and the people, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. It is a rich land. But God is saying, it shall be a wilderness. All the cities broken down, and all at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be desolate. Yet I will not make a, the, a full end. This is mercy. The land will be desolate. Yet I will not make a full end. I will not make it a total destruction. You know why? I still love you. I intend to discipline you, but do not intend to destroy you. Some, sometimes the way parents discipline kids uh, is almost destruction really. Discipline your kids but don't destroy them. Verse 28 For this shall the earth mourn 
and the earth, heavens above be black because I have spoken. The earth will cry because of the destruction and the heavens are all black. Because I have spoken, I have purpose and will not relent. I will not change my mind. Nor will I turn back from it. That's why they all eventually all went into exile. The whole city shall flee from the noise of the horsemen and bowmen. They shall go into thickets and climb up on the rocks. And if you read, read Revelation chapter 6, verse 15, 16 and so on. No need to turn there, but if you remember Revelation 6, in the last days when, when the scrolls and everything open and it's such a terrible thing, the people on earth, the Jews, they'll be running into caves and they'll be hiding in the rocks and so on. That's the future, but this is what it is written here, even now. So there's a near fulfillment as we learn in Isaiah, and there's a future fulfillment. So they will flee from the noise of the horsemen and bowmen, and they shall go into thickets and climb on to the rocks. And in Revelation, they say, we want to die. But you know, it's not their choice. They say, rocks fall on us, kill us, but it's not their choice. They didn't die, they suffered. Every city shall be forsaken, and not a man shall dwell in it. Verse 30. And when you are plundered, what will you do? God is saying to them. So when you are plundered by the Babylonians, what will you do? Though you clothe yourself with crimson, though you adorn yourself with ornaments of gold, Though you enlarge your eyes with pain and flash your eyelashes in vain, in vain you will make yourself fair. Your lovers will despise you. They will seek your life. So you know what the, the, the Israelites will do? I mean the, 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 the Judeans will do? Our enemies will. Since we cannot beat them or we join them. Huh? So what they do is dress up, paint their eyelashes, you know, they are prostituting themselves. Just surrendering is okay. We, we, we make it easier for us. Perhaps if they take us, yeah, our beauty and whatever, at least they won't kill us. So, you clothe yourself with crimson, dress nicely. Yeah. You adorn yourself with gold, ornaments of gold. This is wartime, no? But they are trying to sell themselves. Though you enlarge your eyes, on well, those days, it's about plastic surgery, right? <laughs> we pay, no, not with surgery. In vain, you will make yourself fair. Your lovers, who are these lovers? They were playing adultery with Egypt, with Assyria, with Babylon, and whoever, like, whoever they think they can help them. But they did not turn to God. These were your lovers, right? You think they will accept you again? No. Your lovers will despise you. What they want, they want your life. They will seek your life. So however you dress up, they will still want your life. And then the last part is sorrowful. A woman in labor. A woman in labor is painful, right? And it's all Eve's fault, not your fault. <laughs> For I have heard a voice as of a woman in labor. The anguish as of her who brings forth her first child. It is as if she is crying in pain. She needs help. The voice of the daughter of Zion bewailing herself. She spreads her hands saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is weary because of murderers because these Babylonians are coming to kill and here is like a woman Israel or Jerusalem Judea Judeans are like a woman in labor pain and in labor pain you need help to help deliver your child but instead they are coming to kill you and your child because of murderers. Woe is me. 
So in closing, let's look at Matthew 23. 37 to 39. Matthew 23. Thirty-seven to thirty-nine. What we have just read in Jeremiah four was Jeremiah's prophecy to Judah in the past, Old Testament. But Jesus, when he came in the New Testament, he was also crying unto Jerusalem, and also there's relevance for us. Matthew 23, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Father, blessed are you, for you are our God, you are our Lord, our Yahweh, the Almighty One, the Deliverer. You are our banner, our Nisi, and you are Sikano, our righteousness. So I pray, Lord, even as we have studied, Jeremiah 1 until now 4. Lord, I pray that we will not just celebrate looking at the ills of Judah of old, but to take lesson from here. Lord, that indeed you are merciful and full of grace. Lord, that you will forgive us even as we confess and repent. And I pray, Lord, that you help us all the days of our lives to walk with you, to have you in us, that you will lead and you will guide us, that we will always stay in your ways and in your path, in the light, even as you are in the light. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.